Monster Tech is doing a giveaway on my channel. Stay tuned for details on how you can win. I remember when the Ares line first came out. They talked about how it was inspired by the A-10 Warthog, and it was going to be a gun with a cockpit. When it first released, it definitely lived up to the name and was ripping apart any target unfortunate enough to get stuck in its cone of fire. Enough people complained that it was subsequently nerfed into oblivion. Now, this amazing digital asset, for all its beauty, is relegated to sit in hangars while literally any other fighter makes a better option for an engagement. The Ares was supposed to be great against larger targets. As it stands right now, it's neither a dogfighter or a capital killer. It's just a very attractive paperweight. From a balance perspective, the Ares is a difficult ship to handle. It looks amazing, and the many pilots that have bought it rightfully want to use it. But the Ares is not a dogfighter, at least not against smaller craft. It's supposed to be what you bring out when fighting an Idris or Hammerhead. It's not meant to go up against Gladii or Arrows. It's a boom and zoom ship, like the A-10 Warthog. But that doesn't mean that pilots want to be hopelessly outgunned whenever they run into a Gladius or an Arrow. One of the many challenges when balancing for a video game is that pilots are going to want to take ships out of their designated role and will feel cheated when that doesn't work out, especially when large sums of money are involved, as is in the case of Star Citizen. So we've identified at least two factions of people to keep happy. Ares pilots that want to have a fighting chance regardless of the target, and everyone else who don't want to be constantly blown out of the sky by a ship that is not supposed to be a space superiority fighter. Today, I want to present some solutions that I think could make everybody happy. Wish me luck. My goal is to lay out a way that an exceptional pilot can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a mediocre Gladius pilot. So essentially, let's get the Ares to a point where if I was in the Gladius, I'm still going to die. But if two talented pilots are going at it, the Gladius still has a very good chance of winning. So, how do you make a fighter acceptable against other fighters and great against larger ships? Well, first off, I think the bespoke nature of the Ares is way underutilized. They specced into a single weapon that can't be removed or traded for anything else. This presents a great possibility to make something truly unique. So why do we have just a bigger Gatling and a laser cannon? Let's focus on the Ion. My first change is, rather than just having a big laser cannon, give it a laser beam. Make it wholly unique from any other energy-based weapon. Then, with that done, we can look to Destiny for some ideas on how to flesh out its role. Destiny has several weapons in the Trace Rifle class that present ways to further push the Ion into a unique anti-capital role, while still allowing it to be adequate in other engagements. First, we've got the Prometheus Lens. As the Prometheus continues to damage enemies, it creates a growing sphere of solar damage that affects anything in its volume. As it gets kills, it automatically reloads a section of the magazine to extend its firing time. This makes the Prometheus lens particularly good at taking out vast swaths of weaker enemies en masse. In that sense, it's, it's the exact opposite of what we want for the Ion. But I like the idea of the growing sphere of damage. What if the laser beam of the Ion did something similar where, as it maintains target contact, it creates a similar sphere of heat that allows progressively more of its damage percentage to bypass shields. For example, energy weapons today do not do any physical damage until the shields have been brought down. The ion, however, could be tweaked so that if it keeps the beam on target for at least a second or two, then it starts to do damage to the ship regardless. Damage-wise, it performs more like a ballistic weapon in the latter half of its magazine this way. And this kind of delayed effect is going to pop up in a few of these ideas. The reason I think this is a good solution is because it separates the effects on small ships from big ships very simply by allowing those small ships to avoid punishment by virtue of their maneuverability. Ergo, the strengths of a small light fighter is exactly what you need to negate the punishment that an ion laser beam can dish out. So if you're flying a gladius as you're supposed to be, leveraging your superior agility against a larger craft, then you'll be pretty competitive. The Ion Beam in this case will do normal damage to your shields as long as it maintains contact on you, but you should be able to break that contact by moving out of the way, thus resetting that timer for that sphere. On the flip side, a larger ship like a Hammerhead will not be able to do the same. 
If it wants to stop the punishment, it's going to need to rely on its turrets to dish enough damage to force movement out of the ion to break that contact. Next on our trace rifle list is Aegir's Scepter. No idea if that's how you say it, but that's what we're sticking with. When this gets kills, it slows nearby targets, essentially encasing them in ice and stopping them temporarily. So what if the ion, as the name implies, fired an ion beam? Ion weapons are pretty much what distortion weapons are, but for the purpose of this argument, let's give the ion a hybrid of laser and distortion damage. So it still requires target contact to be really effective, but rather than the damage increasing with time, now it starts to apply distortion damage in addition to that. The advantage provided by a hybrid like this is that since distortion is more effective at bringing shields down, this gives the ion a way to decimate the shield of larger ships and then start dealing physical damage via the laser. But with that distortion, the target ship starts to lose systems, turrets, and it becomes a much more docile target. Again, small ships will be fairly adept at avoiding any of that distortion damage, but those big ships are going to start to have systems going offline. Next on the list is the Cold Heart. The Cold Heart starts at a lower damage rate and then quickly ramps up to a much higher rate while maintaining target contact. You start to see where I'm going with this? Small ships just need to stay agile and they'll have no problem avoiding the higher DPS of maintained contact. But big ships that can't move out of the way are going to take significant punishment. This might seem like the simplest option that we've discussed so far and that's because it is. But it's also the one that I think carries over the most easily to the PvP PvE meta that we have in Star Citizen. This essentially makes it so that you have a lower DPS rate for small ships and then a much higher DPS rate against big ships. You've effectively limited its use against those light fighters while empowering it against its intended larger targets. So while it seems simple, I don't want to gloss over how great a fix this could be for the Ion. But if the Cold Heart represents the easiest implementation of these ideas, what represents the most unique? Well, that's going to be the Divinity. Now, if I have any Destiny players in the audience, they are likely wincing at the mention of Divinity. It used to be really good for boss fights basically essential, and now it's really not. But that was a balanced decision on Bungie's part and doesn't necessarily mean anything here, it's just what I've been going through in other games I play. What does it do? Well, rather than dishing a lot of DPS on its own, Divinity applies a nerf to enemies that makes the damage from your allies greater. So the tragic tale of the Divinity wielder has always been that you deal very little DPS on your own, but your allies do much greater because of you sort of a walk so your children can run type of deal. If we want to apply the same kind of idea to the ion, what if the beam it fires carves a hole in the target shield? This would make the ion, much like the divinity, reliant on others in the attack group to do the real DPS, while the ion is providing the opening. But essentially, so long as you fire into the shield hole made by the ion, you do full damage and bypass shields entirely or by a percentage or whatever makes sense from a balance perspective. Admittedly, I don't think this really solves the problem so much as move the ion into a different category altogether. But I thought it was a cool concept and so wanted to share it. Perhaps another concept down the line will incorporate this kind of idea. So, my ideal fix for the ion would be to give it a bit of an increase to agility, not much, but slight, smooth out some of the flight characteristics so that you're not having to fight it so much, give it pinpoint accuracy, and then make the starting DPS low enough that fighters can shrug it off for brief stints, and then add in any of the aforementioned exotic perks to enhance its efficacy against larger ships. I think this would result in an ion that is much more balanced and capable while still not exceeding its calling as a capital ship killer. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the Inferno. The dark, brooding, sexier of the two in the Ares family. Where the Ion is an energy loadout, the Inferno is the ballistic counterpart. All my focus for this video has been on the Ion. I think there are some potential fixes for the Inferno coming down the pipes with what we know so far about new damage types like Flak, Incendiary, Disarray, etc. But until we know what these do in game, your guess is really as good as mine. But this is where I want to turn the conversation over to you. I've talked about how I'd fix the Ion. Tell me what you think about those ideas. But better yet, tell me how you'd fix the Inferno. With all that said, we are doing a giveaway with Monster Tech. I'm a huge fan of their products, 
and they recently came out with a new version of their flight chair that has a sheepskin cover. It looks absolutely awesome. Here's hoping they come out with a cover so I can throw that on top of the one I have. Monster Tech made the awesome chair that you see me using all the time on stream. They also made my magnetic joystick mounts. And if you want a chance to win a set of desk or chair mounts, all you have to do is like and subscribe to my channel and comment on any video in the giveaway period using that video's secret word. Today's secret word is to tell me how you'd fix the Inferno. And if you want 5% off your order, use code oddjob at checkout. Other than that, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and until next time, this is Oddjob Entertainment, signing off.